All right, welcome to this tutorial. And if you want your model to look like this, oh wait, I need to put this little flap down to the end, but then, oh, come on, come on. Why is it always there? Ah, oh, funky monkey. You better watch this tutorial, find out. So we've got nice interior to this razor back. Although this is mainly just a painting tutorial, you can use it for basically any any type of uh, Space Marine faction. You can even just use the steps that I'm talking about for for just Warhammer in general. Oh boy, this fell off. Anyways, so first of all, we have a very important thing. It's the four different types of, uh, no, five different, I'm not sure, of uh, the painting. So first you're gonna have your priming. This is when you undercoat it in black. You'll see that doing it shortly. Next, we have the base. This is where you base it all, or most of it, in, in a color, which it is mostly, and for example here, we have, for the ultramarines, Magaridge blue. However, if you're a salamander, that would be Elevine green. And uh, if you're blood angels, Mephiston red, I believe uh, that is correct. And yeah, so let's get into it. They also have uh, shading. What else is from shading? Oh yeah, dry brushing. Dry brushing is a necessity. And then layering. We are gonna basically be repeating the process of prime, base, dry, no wait, no, shading, dry, and then finally layering. That, 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 that's how it's gonna work. So yeah, stick to the end for, for it. All right, so I had just done my priming. You see here, the tank is all coated in black. Now, if you have an airbrush like I do, you could have airbrushed it, but for the sake of the example here, I didn't. You're going to need quite a large brush. You can use any brush. For example, I just use, where is that brush actually? This one, and it's quite easy. It takes maybe five minutes to paint all over it. I simply used acrylic paint, although I do not recommend it. It was just because I was low on my usual Abaddon Black. So yeah, next stage will just be doing the base. Okay, so once you've finished painting with the very, very watery, thin down undercoat, it should look a little bit like this. It doesn't have to be fully complete and you're going to do a second one later. But for now, this is good enough. And so, yeah. And on the second coat, you're also going to be doing these little bits over here. The bits you sort of, I guess, missed or took away. So that's something to keep in mind of, to always just do the extra little bits. Have to do those. All right, so uh, we're back here and I just let the second coat dry. You're meant to do two coats and it's looking pretty nice, but there are some patches, for example, over here, that are still pretty black. So we're gonna need to coat them in, in, in uh, another blue, but you, we'll get to that later. So as you can see here, what the black priming does is that it makes the paint stick better, but also because this is actually a lighter color than the actual tank, because I did not prime this because it fall, fell off. However, I pr uh, primed that. So now I'm gonna teach you how to create a simple wash. All you're going to need is your Abaddon Black, or if you're like me and you're cheapo, uh-oh, goodbye airbrush, um, you can just use simple craft acrylic paints. All right, you shake it. Now you put a little bit in, there's just this, oh crap. Oh no. <laughs> I put way too much in. This is more than enough. So now I'm gonna to need to get my brush. Uh, this is my brush for washes. And I'm going to need to mix it. Oh, this is very thick. 
So this is going to be quite a hefty wash. Dip it several times into water so that it is heavily diluted. All right, this should work now. Remember, it, it can still be quite a heavy wash because of what we're going to do later. All right, so this shouldn't be too bad. I'll meet up with you uh, when I finish the wash. It needs to be quite watery, remember, after all, it is a wash. All right, so after you've done your wash, your tank should look somewhat like this or your infantry person, or whatever you're doing. I do the same sort of style on my infantrymen over here. Um, it will look very, very dark, and you will be somewhat almost upset that you ruined the brilliant looking artwork from before. However, it will change, it will look better, trust me. Uh, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> I don't speak for all of you guys. This is just a very simple way to do it if you don't have a lot of talent with Warhammer. It's good for beginners. You don't really require that much. So, once it's all dried, now this will take a decent amount of time to dry. Like, I did this, I think, like an hour, maybe an hour and a half ago, and it's only like just dried. There's even still some patches that haven't dried yet. But I will continue on, nevertheless. For this, I'm going to be using Cantor Blue instead of Magaridge Blue for the pure reason that I want it to have a dark look as well as I'm very, very stingy with my paints and considering that my entire army is painted Magaridge Blue, I don't want to waste it considering that I'm dangerously low right now. So I'm going to be using this very similar Cantor Blue for it. Although it's slightly darker, it'll just give it, I guess, a cooler look. So, let's begin. You're going to need to thin down your paint. Oh. So this, thin it down, then get a sponge off like any ordinary sponge that you have, kitchen sponge, just cut a little bit out. And then what you're gonna need to do is dip it in and boom, 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 boom into just randomized spaces. I know this is a tactic used by many, many uh, people, including many on YouTube, but I, <coughs> use this tactic and I think it would be of great help for you if you knew it and you didn't watch those other YouTubers, which would actually be quite a surprise for me. So, once you've thinned it down, I will meet you back at the point soon. So, see you soon. Now I've finished it. You don't need to cover a lot. As you see, I actually have covered very little, just enough to give it some differentiation in color. So, yeah, next we will be doing our dry brush slash layering. This will be um, used very, very well, hopefully. And I'm going to go for a thinner mixture this time. Okay, so now everything is looking better. But next we have to dry brush. I'm going to be using quite a large brush for dry brushing. Just try and find something flat and that has quite sturdy bristles. So what you're going to need to do is get the color that you would like to dry brush. For the, for me, that would be Calgar, Calgar Blue. So this is quite a bright co color compared to uh, how we're doing it. So what you're going to have to do is first shake it. You always have to shake these, all right. Then get a little bit, and don't forget to thin it down. Thinning this down will be useful if your paint water is dark because I'll just darken the the Calgar blue. Now brush it in there for like a couple of seconds like that. Now you're going to need a piece of tissue paper and just wipe it on until most of it has come off. Now what you're going to need to do is just to repeatedly do it on the model. It gives you brilliant effects like this. So I'll meet you up when I'm done. I know this might be a little bit late, but you're really not supposed to put that much on your brush, very, very little amount, so that when you brush it back and forth, you can see these amazing little lines over here that are just accumulated. It's, it's like layering, but you need like no skill at all. It's amazing. See you all over here. 
So it, dry brushing very, very much helps and it's an awesome way to do, do very quick layering, especially because with some of my old models, I'll show you, I had to do the layering by hand. Anyways, these are my new models. So yes, I've tried dry brushing with this, but this is by far the most successful dry brush I've, I, I've had. So it looks amazing. Hope these techniques are good with you too. Okay, so uh, if you look inside here, I have done the Zandri Dust second coat. It looks a little bit messy, but we'll go over that later with Ushabi Bone. I've also done black in some of the areas for your people, which will look somewhat like this. Black was for the gun. Well, if you guys have chain swords in between the armor, as well as um, the... the uh, Ugh. Gun, gun holster and any other spots that you might want to place them so yeah I, I've done that next we'll be moving on to lead belcher which is an important color so yeah okay so um I have done quite a lot in fact I have not only finished the interior like when it's I'm a crap, but you can't say it you can't oh here we go. Thank you for the fact, Vincent. Um, so I've done the interior, and as you can see, I did a mock globe inside, which is just a little extra feature you can add if you want to. I did some Agrex Earthshade after doing a dry brushing of Ushabi Bone. Now closing this up. I did attempt to do some dry brushing on the black. I'm probably gonna have to, probably gonna have to clean that up. But uh, on, on another note, I'm almost done. I've done all of this. I've done the tracks, so although I'm going to add some blood for the blood god, which will be very nice. First time using this paint. Uh, and yeah, I've also finished this guy, although he doesn't look too good quality. And my hunter killer missile is not how I would have liked it. But I think I'm going to do all of that interesting stuff, and then I'll catch you later. All right, so uh, also... To clean up with any other spots that I, you missed, I'm actually going to be using Cantor Blue. The Magaridge Blue would have done. Oh, hi, Vids. <laughs> okay. So this model is practically finished. I have gotten the Blood for the Blood God nicely placed on these bits over here. I've even inscribed my own name on this. I will need to do the decals. I'll check up with you when that's done. Uh, I've done the dryer brushing on this and yeah i'm effectively done all i need is to do the uh, decals which uh, shouldn't take too long